run 365. This is <laughs> so flashy. Oh my God. Yep, that's me. And you're probably asking yourself why the hell I would do this. December 1st, 2021. Honestly, I still don't know why I decided to do this. I just had this weird feeling that I just wanted to see if I could run every day and what the hell would happen. I was never a runner. I've always been fast, that was my thing, but I always had a reason for it. I always played like basketball, volleyball. I just never was the person who was like, I'm just gonna go out and run. But I kinda thought I would like that, especially when I travel a lot, I don't have access to the gym, it'd be nice to just be able to run. I just finished the CrossFit challenge, did this running every day. I'm listening to my body. I'm not allowing myself to burn out in this challenge. This is for mental health. The last thing I want to do is burn out. Here's five quick tips to starting running. Number one, it's okay to walk. I used to think a run had to be like over 10 kilometers. You had to have lactic acid build up and you couldn't take a break. I realized you can literally run for two minutes and just walk for a bit. Two, warm up. Just warm up. Do some mobility work. We'll talk about later on injury. It is so cold. Three, when you're starting out, just go for a time. Don't care about the distance, don't care about the speed. Just say, I'm gonna run for five minutes. I'm gonna run for 10. Four, get proper running shoes. Hookah, Asics are kind of foundational ones that you can get cheaper. There's some amazing Nike ones, but to get the amazing Nike ones, they're like $300. And starting off, just get good ones. And no good ones do not count as those three-year-old running shoes in your back that have worn out heels because those will give you shin splints. And fifth, if you're running in the cold, put on all your warm stuff and jog in place for about five minutes. You'll be so hot and overheating that you'll want to go outside. I didn't really have a goal. I just wanted to see if I could start running and maybe do a 10K. I knew once you went down that rabbit hole of a runner, you eventually got into like marathons and ultras. Maybe that's the thing I'm into. January 1st, 2021, I'd run every day and then it just suddenly became like I couldn't throw it away. Getting past day 10 of running every day was the hardest because up till then you could just throw it away. It was like, oh, it's only nine days. But after 30 days, I'm already here. If I stop now, I'm never gonna do this again. Almost slightly compulsive. I remember a concept I heard in a book a long time ago where you always wanna stop 10% before you want to, especially when building a habit. And it seems counterintuitive, especially for me, the rationale is always like, give 100%, go. I find for myself, sometimes I go zero to 100 so much into something, I burn myself out and I just wanna quit and then I grow resentment to it and I never wanna do it again. Habits coming in New Year's resolutions, at least for me, can be so beneficial. You can make a healthy habit, but you can equally make a bad one. Or you put into something, regardless of the benefits you're getting back, you will just hold more value to it. So far my body's feeling good, but that's because my overall volume for the week isn't an extreme, even though I'm running every day. It's very like average of someone starting to run. We're approaching February and I'm asking myself, why the hell did I start to do a run streak in the middle of Canadian winter? Oh boy. I still don't have a proper answer, but I now have an answer of how to survive that. Dress in layers so you can strip down, buy yourself a pair of waterproof running shoes, it will save your feet. And when there's ice, slow down. Pretty simple. So um, I just got back from day 88, and the last couple days I've really been asking myself like, why I'm doing this, what do I want to do from this? Like I'm enjoying running, but it's more right now what's holding me is like, oh, I've done 88 days in a row, I can't break it. I did a couple 10Ks, and in the back of my mind, running is marathons, triathlons, so I was like, maybe I'll just keep training towards that. It'd be a nice challenge one day to do a marathon. Like those long runs aren't like filling my soul, lack of better terms. And since my basketball career ended, I feel anyone who's a post-grad has that feeling of like, constantly looking for a competitive outlet that matches the sports you have under the age of like 22. And I think like I get little glimpses of things and I try them for even sometimes a couple of years, but nothing is really ever stuck stuck. What I'm craving is that shot at the beginning of a race, that explosion.
end of February, we're approaching about 100 days, and I started to get a lot of questions on how my body was changing. I think a lot of people have this idea that if you start running, you're just gonna plummet with weight loss, or you're gonna lose all your muscle. That's definitely not the case, unless one, you just start to burn more calories than you eat, so you're in your calorie deficit. You replace your running with weight training. Now that's what I made sure not to do. I continued my three weight training sessions a week, and then just added on some runs. As long as I was getting adequate protein, I was still going to maintain my muscle mass. I actually feel, if anything, around this time, I started to gain more muscle because I was working on more explosive things like sprints. And because suddenly I felt more athletic, like I was working towards a goal, it made me put more effort into my resistance training. But suddenly I was like, ooh, I'm gonna do a 10 kilometer race and I wanna feel fast. Three tips to not making running suck. First, make a killer playlist. If there's one accomplishment I made over the last year was making a ton of running playlists. I'll put them in the description down below. Two, start slow. There's nothing worse than the lactic acid buildup if you start out sprinting and that cramp and pushing through. Mm -mm. Three, realizing there's two types of runs. There's one, you will get the high from the success, that's getting a PR, running a certain distance. Or the second is just the endorphins from getting out and running. Those are the two kind of highs I always chase for, just pure endorphins or the high from achieving something. The real hard hitting question that I know you all came here for, at your toes, wondering, how often did I wash my hair? Two to three times a week, um, typically on my harder run days. Now that's the thing, every run wasn't like a sweat pouring run. I think I'm on day 128. Three to four of the runs were just really modest. I walked a bit, I ran a bit. Sometimes it was just a kilometer, sometimes it was five kilometers. Three runs a week, two would be a short speed run and one would be a longer run or like an interval training. What did I gain the most from running? One was understanding the runner's high. It is cheesy, it is, but it's just that like flow. And realizing I can achieve that without being in a basketball game meant a lot to me. Okay, day 135 we got at Barry's boot camp. Speaking of athlete, that brings me to April. April was when I felt the most athletic I have in years. I was focusing on not just distance, but speed. That was always my thing running. It was just, I was the fast girl on the team. That was my thing. And I got back to it and I was feeling like myself. I'd be on run and I'd be like, you know, you're a video game. You're going back and forth. You're dodging things. You're jumping up. And I felt so good. But there's this looming thing in the distance. April 24th, I was getting surgery. I just need mobility and clear my lungs and water. So I'm just gonna go run on the trail. I tried to run outside, it's 36 above. You know what sounds great to hangover, broken, when you're dehydrated, running. Had a layover because I booked my Coachella trip way too late. Anyways, I got back. Delirious, I haven't slept. I'm dehydrated. I run a 10K in five days. I am not ready. This is so stupid to go to Calachella. Hi, editing Kelty here. If you're gonna run a 10 kilometer race for the first time, life hack, don't go to Coachella five days beforehand. I didn't think I needed to state the obvious, but apparently that wasn't obvious to 2022 Kelty. So I ran the first race actually with my mom, brother, a stepdad and stepsister, and that, if I can recommend anything, is just sign up for a race once or twice a year with your family or friends. Chukita. I finished first of the family. Kennedy got second. <laughs> then we'll see my fam, who comes next. I don't know who to bet on. My brother's younger, but he has severe asthma, and my mom's 60, but she is a runner. Didn't break the streak. I went for a Barry's boot camp today also with my family to show them. I just went slow. But yes, surgery. If you didn't know, I got my boobies taken out. I fake titties. They're gone. I felt they really restricted me physically. But it just sucked that I know I'd worked so hard to get this level of athleticism and I would have to take so many steps back for a couple weeks recovering from surgery, which you're probably asking. Kelty, you had surgery, but you ran every day. Um, yeah, I was willing at this point to give up my run streak, but then I kind of remembered what was the point of this run streak. It was only to run as much as my body could recover from. So what did I do? I started with running one meter.
And yeah, there's gonna be a lot of people on the internet. But it's my run streak, and I think that's also the problem with running is there's a lot of backseat runners who are telling you this is a run. That's a run. And you have to be so intense, and it's so pretentious running, and it's obnoxious. Running this way, you have to this and strap, and you have to train for a marathon. And Uninviting. When running is literally the only 100% accessible thing aside from walking that every human has, and it's the most pretentious sport out there. Okay, I need to rephrase that because no, walking and running is not accessible to every single person. Obviously, people have health issues that can get in the way of that. What I was referring to in that moment is the cheapest form of movement we have available. So that's why it's most financially accessible to everybody. Could you tell though it was just a little heated so it was not thinking too straight? Well, the story is let's not be pretentious about something that is free. So something else like, you know what? F you runners who are not gonna say it's a run. It's a run for someone who just has surgery. So yes, I just kind of did a little doo -doo -doo, about a meter or two and then I went for a walk. And that was my run until about six weeks and I had to go from my doctor and I started running again. Now, how did I track these runs? I did two things. Every single day I upload on Strava and you've probably noticed, you're like, Kelty, how the hell did you keep track of all these videos? I just posted the videos in Strava so I could go look back at every day and be like, oh, that run when I was in the pink outfit on the beach, that was run number 264. And also, this is my wellness diaries. Here is the tracking sheets I use to just track my runs. If you guys want, I'll be doing a video in January showing how I specifically track my workouts. But yes, I just used it on my iPad. Come May and June, I just got back to kind of how I was in December, just feeling good. Just just running, might be run on the beach, might be running hungover, because that was hurdle number two. June, I went to Ibiza, I went to Marbella, I was hungover. <laughs> and that might have been the biggest struggle. We made it, we did. Started at Big Valley and now we're in Ibiza. <laughs> yes! I don't really have a solution aside from, I don't recommend just drink a lot of electrolytes and take it slow. And there was a couple days that it was very slow. If you saw me on one of those days, you probably like, is, is that a run? It counts. Here's the funny thing about habits. I never set out to run every single day for a year. I just set out to run every day for 30 days. But after a month, I thought, sure, might as well go for 100. And once I got to 100, I thought, sure, I can go for 200. And after running 200 days in a row, it seemed like a waste to not go for an entire year. So you'll notice there's a lot of missing footage because at the time, I didn't think I'd be making this video. I honestly never imagined I could do it, but I didn't get here by thinking I'd run every day for a year. I just thought I have to go one more day. Don't focus on flipping your life upside down. Just focus on going 1% better every day. And yeah, if you don't believe me, I run every single day. It's old Strava, so I got that. July, I came back from vacation. I had time off, I recovered from surgery, I was feeling good, and I wanted to feel athletic again. So I made it my goal. The goals don't have to be just run a marathon, just run a 10K, there's so many different ways. For me, I wanted to work on speed. So I go to Barry's boot camp. the treadmill's maxed out at 15 miles per hour, so that was my goal for all summer, was just to run the fastest speed for at least 15 seconds on the treadmills. And that was a really fun time, reconnecting with my body and all the changes I went from. Getting more athletic again, and literally taking implants outside of my body and having to reconnect with myself and moving, moving felt different. And so I was reconnecting with myself. What, what is the best way to really test myself? You know what? I kind of think I want to push myself. I see these people doing these ultras, these marathons, the Nick Bears of the YouTube world. I was like, you know what? I was a competitive swimmer. I'm going to do a triathlon. I really regret this decision. It's going to be so cold. Okay, I just got to go. Oh my God, it's so cold. Now bike. This was gonna, oh sorry, this, that looked awful. I am so sorry for that aesthetic. So in my mind, I wanna do an Ironman one day. So I thought, you know what, let's just do an Olympic triathlon with zero training. In you know, a couple of years, I look back after I've really trained and see where my time improved from. 5K, I just realized I don't know how to pace myself. Don't do this. This is where recovery is important and where a lot of us overtrain. I think it's obvious for strength training and stuff like that. Like you can't just lift 200 pounds if you can't lift 200 pounds. People don't see that with running. It is just an impact on your joints. Impact on your joints. And you gotta build it. That's why you kinda gotta start slow. Cause if you go too much too fast, you'll hurt yourself and then you're out. Slow, slow, slow. Guess wasn't slow. Surgery for a couple months was used to just running, you know, five to seven kilometers, full on triathlon. Don't do it. Don't 
do it. I was doing good. Did the swimming, easy. The bike, my GPS was wrong. I didn't do 40K, I did over 60K, but that was another story. I'm in my last nine kilometers to run. I see the Cactus Club in the distance I'm running towards. I'm going, I see the bike path. I decide, you know what, I'm gonna zigzag up. I hop on it, my hip seizes, just and there came the first injury of my run streak. Went and saw a professional and they understood. I was like, I have like 50 days in this run streak. I know it's not good. I just, I really want to get to a year. And they kind of were like, you're risking a lot. And I was like, yeah, but you know, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm not an Olympic athlete. I'm a YouTuber. So um, <laughs> I'm going to risk it, which is awful advice. But I went back to kind of my run as much as you can and just went slow. I went to some Barry's boot camps and I was, you know, just going on four miles per hour where everyone just starts their jog at five. Like I was like, you know what? I just got to keep going. Listening to my body, stretching, resting, and strengthening in ways I could. Now right there, you're probably like, wow, that's defeating. This is a cool thing about habits. If you hijack it, humans were pretty primitive still. You can hijack your mind to build a habit that it becomes so hard that it's actually harder not to do than to do. So that's what running became. It came compulsive, which is not helping itself. But how do you stay motivated? Step one, set a goal, reverse engineer it. The simplest steps start there. So if you wanna run a marathon, you've never run before, just start with, I'm gonna run 500 meters three times a week. Next week, I'm gonna run a kilometer three times. Option two, also just start so easy that it becomes a habit. Now we're on to November, the last 30 days before my year run. And this is where I found the true meaning of running. And it's really cheesy, but it's something we all need. And it's something I think we really all need after the panorama we had three years ago, community. I did not realize how friendly the running community is. I just saw the crazy ultra marathoners. I was like, ah, uh, they're gonna think I'm lame going on a run. Suddenly I started to realize you go on a run, the run was, Little runners nod, you do. When you go to these running events, everyone in the crowd is really nice and they're welcoming. The volunteers are there screaming for you. I gotta go do a 10 kilometer run with my mom, which was one of my best memories in my entire life. Feeling like you're a part of something. Speaking of community, I just wanna congratulate you guys. There's a lot of you that started your run streak. And whether you're on day one or day 177, like Shannon and Kat, who I posted here, we're all on this together. And that's the cool thing about running. But we can all be running at the same time and running different speed, different distances, different goals, but we're all running. If you're thinking about this, I would recommend starting with a 30 day run streak. Do not kill yourself. It doesn't mean you have to go run five kilometers. Some people might say a run streak has to be at least a mile a day. I don't care. Do what works for you. It's a great way to just build that habit because now I have such a habit that going for a run a couple times a week is just a part of my lifestyle. It's no longer this thing of like, oh, maybe I'll go for a run on Tuesday, but I'm not really in the mood. It's just a part of something I do and it's because I've built that habit. But where am I going moving forward? I think eventually I want to do triathlon. I want to break 40 minutes for my 10 kilometer, but in order to do that, the run streak isn't actually the most effective way to get faster. You need rest, you need recovery. And unfortunately, because I was running every day, I could never really fully put 100% effort into because I knew the next day I couldn't take a rest day. I wanted to do something we did together of us doing like run streaks, but I also don't really love the idea of everyone doing run streaks because I, I think it's a great starting point to get that habit, but is it sustainable long-term? I don't know. So. I decided to do, let's start the road to a thousand. Run number 364. And I will be still tracking my runs. I won't go every single day, but it'll go 366, 367, all the way to my eventual goal is to be able to say I accomplished a thousand runs. It might take five years, it might take 10 years. Sixty-five, <sighs> And of course there's the snowstorm first one of the year. <sighs> I have a lot of emotions about this. I feel accomplished, I feel good. I also feel like this number is really arbitrary. I was like, okay, yeah, a year, just another day. This is <laughs> so flashy, oh my God. <laughs> Oh, let's go 
gonna be the slowest run ever. That was the slowest run, but I just wanted to do over 10K. It was my goal. So I think I just did just under 12K. I'm gonna go for a like, big PR. I was like, you know what? Today was just fun. I didn't pay any attention to my time. And that's really cringe that I said running could be fun. After 365 days, I feel I can call myself a runner. I know it sounds so dumb, but running seems so daunting. It seems like, oh, you have to be this like fast and speed and have all these splits. And it was just like, even I was athletic and I felt I couldn't get into running or call myself a runner. So, but that means I also have to break the streak. I'll just warn you. It's actually harder to stop than you think. So you're like, I'm just one day, just not. I'm just gonna throw it away like that. Like, hmm. But comment down below if you guys want to join and maybe let's start a little community. I think I like the name Kali Road to a thousand and let's see what happens in 2023. Just start small, start small and build. 9.30 at night, the day after a run 365 and it's so weird. I'm about to go to bed. I didn't run today. Feels like I got dirty dishes in the sink or I just, I, oh. I guess I'm just, Gonna go to bed. Good night.